Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I want to show you how to take amazing portrait and landscape at the same time using one flash. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramini. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible city of Paris, France, living in Los Angeles, California. And I'm here with my daughter, who is dressed up as a cowboy. Bonjour, Marine. Bonjour. And we're going to take an amazing portrait of her using just one flash and the amazing wild, wild west. So come and follow me and let's take this photo. All right, guys, I want to show you the kind of gear I'm going to be using for this shoot. It's very simple. I have this one umbrella and you will find all the links of the gear I'm using down below this video. This is a really cool umbrella and it works like just an umbrella and it makes a softbox with a grid on. As you can see here, this is a grid. The grid is really important because you don't want the light to go everywhere. And I think this is like $49, the whole thing. So I'm going to be using the Speedlight You Know uh, Y9560T-3. It's like $50, $60. And I'm going to be using the remote. This remote is amazing. It's called N560TX Manual Flash Controller. And this goes on the camera. So let me show you how you set it up. First, you turn on the flash, then you turn on the remote, okay? And then you see these two buttons here called ACT. ACT is gonna make the connection between this and that. All you do is press ACT here, and then there's a little blue light here, and you just press uh, any settings here, and now they are both connected, okay? This is, uh, by default, is channel one, group A. Uh, and I'm only going to be using a flash. So if I press test, yes, it's working. So now I'm going to be putting this on my, on my thing. This is for Canon, but it works perfect for my Sony A7R. It's really great because I'm, I'm using it in manual mode. Okay, and now I can change the speed here. And as you can see, it changes in real time on the flash, that's really cool. Voila, so that's the basic thing. And then what I'm gonna do is I have an assistant because we, we're not gonna work with a tripod today. All he's gonna do is hold on the flash like this because we're gonna be moving fast and changing things. And there is wind, I don't wanna deal with tripod. So he's just gonna be holding it like this, basically. And he's gonna be a, a, like a, a live tripod and move around. I'm gonna tell him to move around. I can change the speed directly there. So it's, it's a very fast way to work, faster than using a tripod, I find, because I can fine tune the light how I want it. I always start the light, you know, like on a, on a medium value, like, uh, like one slash eight, one eighth of a power, just to, to start with, and we'll see, uh, you know. So let's start taking some photos, and we, the whole thing is to find a nice composition where we can really see her body and see the landscape. And one of the tricks is, is to find a perspective where she really stands out. She has to stand, like her entire body has to be in the sky so we can really see her. If she's against some trees or grass, she's gonna get mixed up and it's, uh, it's not a good composition. So that's the hardest thing for me is to find a place here in this wild, wild west where we can get that composition. So let's look and let's research. <music> I like this position, you see, I like this position because uh, the sun is coming toward her face and the flash is just giving a little feel on the shadows, but still from the direction of the sun. It's just to, you know, it's just to make her have a little more details, okay? But then we need to have a clean slate, meaning I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask everybody to move and without moving my camera on the tripod, uh, without, I'm just going to take that so in Photoshop I can erase the flash man. Uh, so, all right, let's take a few more photos. All right, so I got a whole bunch of photos from this angle. So guys, can you move out? So I'm gonna take a clean slate. So with the same settings, I'm at F10, 100 for a second. I'm taking a clean slate here right now. All right, so that's another setup I'm gonna be trying. You see, I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I want her body to be against something that really contrasts and that grass here really contracts her. So. 
I'm going to show you a photo with or without flash. You can see it's different. So I'm going to try different flash settings. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm going to go at F7. I'm trying to get my speed between 100 of a second and 200. It's usually what it, it works the best with the flash. So right now, I'm at 5.6, 1 to 100 of a second. I'm using spot focusing. So I'm focusing really on my daughter. And then let's take a few photos and see what's going to happen. Okay, guys, move out so I can take a clean slate. Uh, I need a clean photo so I can erase everybody and just what I want. All right, so we tried different outfits, we tried different locations, and now let's go into Lightroom and Photoshop and see what we can do with all that. All right, guys, so that's the first retouch that I did of this photo. That's what we, I'm going to show you today, how to get that result. Uh, I also got this result. Uh, you know the same day and then uh, the day before we actually went with different clothes and got this one and this one that I really like so here is the shots that I got and you see the flash is going to give that extra uh, you know cleaningness on the skin you know it's just going to make the skin just look sharper uh, nicer uh, and you see how much of a light feel that is so Basically, I'm going to be using this photo and then I'm going to be using this photo as my slate to erase everything. So starting with this as my slate to erase everything. So first of all, I'm going to do a basic retouching on this one and then we're going to go to Photoshop and do some magic. So uh, so when I do portrait retouching, I go much like I don't do like open the shadows, bring on the highlights. I don't do that at all. I open the shadows a little bit uh, on this one. I want to bring on a little bit the highlights. I'm going to do my black point using the option key. I'm looking at her and then the white point, something like this, you know, and I'm really mostly looking at her. And then I'm going to go maybe do a little bit of uh, shade. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go for a warm look with a little bit of shade with a little bit of magenta, you know, maybe make it make the whole shot, a little, open up the shadows even more and maybe open this like this okay and I'm gonna give you all the raw files by the way so you can play around with them and I'm gonna give you a different position that she's having so that you can you know create your own photo if you're capable of the challenge okay and voila so now I'm gonna press command shift C to copy all that retouching check all I'm gonna copy all that and I'm gonna take my slate and press command V so now both photos have the same retouching uh, also you want to make sure that uh, for this to work that the uh, you see I was at one tenth one hundred of a second at f.56 ISO 200 and this one I was at exactly the same settings so make sure that you have a slate that has the exact same settings than what you're doing with the with the flash and remember I told you I always try to be at one hundred of a second using my flash it's a good speed if you are too slow the flash is going to be too much if you're too fast you're not going to see the flash one hundred of a second is a safe bet. That's why I went to ISO 200 because I didn't want to, you know, be at f4 and have too much, uh, too much uh, photo, too much blur in my photo. Okay, so both photos were done with the same things. They both were have a basic retouch. Now I can right click and do my magic. I can go to Edit and open as layers in Photoshop, and that's going to open one Photoshop file and put both files on the same, uh, on different layers in the same file. Here we are. So you can see uh, there. Are, so now I want to erase. I want to erase him. Well, first of all, I got to select both of my layer, and I'm basically using the workspace called Photography. If you don't, if your Photoshop doesn't look like the same one, you can go here, or you can go to Windows Workspace Photography. Okay, that's what you're looking for. I selected both layers. I'm going to go to Edit, Auto Align Layers because I might have moved slightly from one photo to the other, and it's very important. Uh, well, apparently I did not move at all on this one, but sometimes I do move. It's really rare that I don't. And now all I have to do is create, click here to create a mask. Take a little brush, B for brush. Hold on the control and Alt key on your keyboard to make your brush bigger or small. Make sure black is the foreground color. And check this out. I'm just going to erase the gentleman because I got a clean slate. I don't have to do like crazy selection. I just can erase him. And I can probably erase also the two people 
here in the back. And voila. And now she's alone doing this. Okay, so that's not all. Now, when I'm at this stage, um, I don't like the fact that I don't have any details in the sky. I want to add some sky. So I'm going to go to my library and I'm going to pick up a sky that I like. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to provide you... Uh, download this video you'll be able to download this amazing sky that I shot in Florida and this guy I'm just gonna put it here uh, over the top of the photo and I'm done it's crazy no and then I'm just gonna put it into um, well first of all I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this uh, maybe here okay and then I'm gonna duplicate that layer okay now I've got two layers and this one I'm gonna press command T Okay, so I have Command T, which is Edit, Free Transform, Command T. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go Flip Vertical. Okay, then I'm going to hold on the Shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to drag this guy until it clicks right next to this one. Okay, if it doesn't click, you got to make sure that in View, you got Snap on, which I didn't have Snap on. And when you got Snap on and you hold on the Shift key, boom, you see, boom, it snaps. Okay, and it's perfectly aligned. Okay, so now I got this kind of thing, which is weird. I'm going to select both layer. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click merge layer. So they are going to become just one layer. And this one I'm going to put into multiply mode. And multiply mode is going to blend in the sky. But you see that sky is doing kind of weird things. We can, we can see some of the clouds here and there. I mean, it does kind of do a natural dodge and burn. But if you don't like it, on some photos it's not going to work. I give you a very fast trick. You take the lasso tool and you make a selection of everything which is not sky, very rough selection like this. Make sure you're on the layer where there's a sky. And then you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you take a huge number like 700 or something. And what that's going to do is that it's going to basically blur this whole section of the photo. You see, and now all the dodge and burn is gone. L uh, let me show you. If I put this back into normal mode, we have the top of the sky with some real texture and the rest is just basically going to be a color and multiply is just going to make things darker and it's going to you know just blend the color so before after and it's a little too much so i'm going to lower the opacity and i just want to get some texture here okay and i'm happy with that and basically that's the process now uh to make this really pop I need to do a few things. First, uh, I'm going to do uh, some dodge and burning. Uh, so I'm going to create a new layer that I'm going to put into overlay mode. Okay. And I'm going to call it DJ uh, Dark. DJ Dark means dodge and burn. Sorry, not DJ. DB, dodge and burn dark. DJ is something else. I'm a DJ. Okay. And uh, so you want to make sure that your foreground color is black, but right now I got red. So if you press D on your keyboard, it's gonna it's gonna put the default color, which is black and foreground white in 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 uh, background. So D. So you want to have a black color. I'm gonna press a B for the brush. Take a big brush. So in Photoshop, if you hold on a Control in Alt key and you go left and right, you make your brush big or small. And if you go up and down you make your brush uh, smooth or hard. I want a very smooth brush and about this size, maybe this size. And I'm going to do some dodge and burn. I'm going to put the opacity of my brush at 10. So you want to go really light. And I just want to make, for example, this this way here, this dirt way kind of darker. I want to maybe make darker the top of the sky here. So that's why it's at 10 because you know you have to go over and over to create anything. I want to make maybe this a little darker, like the bottom of the photo, maybe so that it's a little more interesting. Okay, and then sometime I randomly just add a bit of darkness, just a little bit here and there to just make the color more interesting. Okay, check it out before, after. And if it's something you don't like, oh, I don't like it here, you can press E, or you can go here for the erase tool, and you can just make sure your erase tool is that. Uh, a hundred percent and you can just erase what you just did here so you can go between B brush where you brush darkness and E where you erase it B you brush it and E you erase it you got the point okay but now we're gonna do the opposite we're gonna do dodge and burn DB bright or light light let's call it light actually okay and same idea I'm gonna put this into overlay mode and I'm gonna take the brush press X for the white 
and now I'm gonna make some of the photo a little bit brighter okay a little bit brighter okay and I'm just basically you see here I'm just because I'm at 10 it, it's it's very light and that's also what I do often in Lightroom the idea is you just want to make some of uh, I'm looking for spots which are already bright I'm just making them brighter but I'm doing it manually you see by doing it manually you're complexing the light of your photo you're breaking uh, you know the, the luminance in your photo and making it more interesting all right something like that now check it out how much more interesting it's getting before after before after okay and if you think it's too much one trick is you can go to filter blur gaussian blur don't use one uh, but just use like 50 and 50 is going to make it's going to blur a little bit what you just did and going to make it a little more subtle okay before after before after and if you think it's too much you can just lower the opacity here of the of the layer but I like it like this way and now I'm ready for my final look so when I'm in Photoshop the final look I always do it with the uh, with the curve I do first a curve for the exposure so curve number one exposure okay and so I just decide well actually no curve number one is not exposure curve number one is contrast you always do contrast before exposure because contrast is going to basically change a lot your exposure so on this one i just want to make if you click here you make this whole brighter and this darker well I, i'm adding more contrast you see i'm adding more contrast to the photo okay that's a little too much voila okay and now i'm going to go to my exposure curve and on this one so exposure curve i usually just make it brighter so because the contrast made it darker i'm just going to add a little curve so i have I show you before one contrast and one exposure okay and usually I do a third curve I'm crazy about curves today and this one is for color actually not I'm not gonna use color I'm gonna use even better than color I'm gonna use color balance colors balance is amazing to really get a, a color look to your photo also when, when in, in Photoshop when I'm in Lightroom I usually do that with my profile but here in Photoshop so basically I'm gonna you have shadows mid-tone and highlights and I'm just playing around so mid-tones, I think I want to make this photo a little warm. So if I go left, it's going to make it greener. If I go right, it's going to make it uh, warmer. I like it warmer. Same thing here. A little warmer, a little more yellow. Okay, and then the hi highlights, maybe. Highlights, I can do uh, a little warm in the highlights. Yeah, not well, not too much. Not too much. It's already really warm. Uh, so I'm not going to touch the highlights, but in the shadows I could go the reverse. In the shadows I could maybe add some blue, just to a little bit of blue and a little bit of green to go a little reversed. Okay, and then um, and you can see the before and after and before and after. If you see it's too much, you can lower the opacity, or you know, you can just go. And that's that's I really leave this point up to your creation. Okay, and um, voila, just playing around, playing around, and then you can adapt or maybe. Uh, gonna add a bit more exposure because it darkened everything maybe uh, add a bit more uh, you know contrast and voila and usually the last thing I, I do on this one uh, look at that I love this photo the last thing I would do on this one is and without the flash I would not get her skin like this believe me it would it would be a little muddy it wouldn't be as good uh, this is beautiful this is a Santa Monica Creeks no uh, Malibu Creek State Park Malibu Creek State Park I love this view. Uh, I think on this one, I'm just gonna add some sharpening. So usually for sharpening, what I do is I create a layer that's gonna take into account all we've done so far by pressing Command, Alt, Shift, E. On the sharpening, I go crazy. I go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and then usually I put like 200% and then 1.7. But remember, I'm on a layer, so I don't want the sharpening to happen in the back. I, I don't want it on the skin. I just want it not everywhere. So I usually I apply it everywhere, 200%, 1.7. Look at that. And then I create a mask. And then I'm going to take a brush, make it 100%, or maybe not 100%, like 50%. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to take black as my foreground color. And then I'm, I'm going to basically mask the sharpening 
here on the mountains. I only want the sharpening in the front and maybe just a little bit on her. No, not too much sharpening on her. I don't think you'll, you'll see a big difference on the video. Let me show you the before. Oh, yeah, you should see it before, after. Really makes the photo pop. And honestly, at this point, you can try different colors. I could, you know, I could go, instead of going warm, I could go, let me turn that off. You know, I could go take color balance and make it, you know, uh, much more blue photo. Oops, sorry, I have to take that out. You know, I could make a much more blue photo, go for a much colder tones, you know, whatever you feel like doing. I like what I did here. I'm going to delete that. Uh, well, I like what I did here. And, oops, I did color balance too. Voila. Okay, I'm sorry. I just want to show you that you can do anything. I mean, it, it's completely arbitrary, the level of saturation of anything you want to do. But, so that's how I, that's the first version I did. I did it much brighter. And that's how I did this portrait also, which I really think is cool. That's the one I showed you on the behind the scene. But also, this portrait, which I really like. And this portrait that I really like. Simple setup, just one flash. If you want to know more about these kind of courses, I got a full course that I'm shot on a subject called the Portrait Composite Workflow. And uh, you can see, sometimes I work with one or two flash, and that's the you know behind the scene, and that's the final result. That's the behind the scene and final result. Behind the scene and final result. Behind the scene and final result. And same idea, behind the scene and final result. So it's really a type of photography I love to do. I think it's very strong and uh, pretty simple. If you want to know the gear, what's incredible about this is that the, the, the price of the gear I'm using, which you'll find the link below, is unbelievable. I think the whole setup is less than $200, including the remotes and everything. So voila, uh, the, don't forget to check out my composite portrait kit uh, down below if you want to you know, try out this, this gear. You can download the source files and you know try to recreate it yourself and you can even post it on social media as long as you credit me as at photosearch.com uh, you know on Instagram or on Facebook so I can see your work you just put at photosearch.com and you just credit me as the photographer you can do whatever you want with this raw file they are yours to practice and to see this technique which I believe is amazing. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I hope you get a chance to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All you have to do is click on subscribe. And don't forget to click the little bell so you can get a notification every time a video comes out. And don't forget to like this video and share it if you can. Uh, you know, I want to make this kind of videos for you. I hope you do like them and I will see you in another video. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.